Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh my Lord Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. Oh all pervading personality of Godhead. Oh all pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It's the only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manif manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu. Sivadam Tapa Trayon Mulan. Shivadam Tapotrayam Maranam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimba Pare Ishwaraha. Kimba Pare Ishwara. Sadio Hidi Avarudya Tetra. Sadio Rudi Avarudya Tetra. Kriti Behi Susu Subhistakshana. Kriti Behi Susu Subhistakshana. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart the highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all the highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all such truth uproots the threefold miseries such truth uproots the threefold miseries this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity this beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization is sufficient in itself for God realization what is the need of any other scripture what is the need of the other scripture as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama Kalpatoro Galitam Phalam. Nigama Kalpatoro Galitam Phalam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Sangitam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Malayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Malayam. Mohur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. Mohur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavuka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of the Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Even though its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrimvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrimvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. 
Punya Shravana Kirtanam Hidyantaksto Hiya Bhadrani Hidyantaksto Hiya Bhadrani Vidunati Surit Satam Vidunati Surit Satam To hear from Krishna, uh, to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita Is it self-righteous activity? It is self-righteous activity And for one who hears about Krishna and for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies his body who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies his body who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu abhadresu. Nasta preesu abhadresu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki Bhakti Bhavati Naistaki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tada rajastamo bhava. Tada rajastamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayasche. Kamalo bhadayasche. Cheta etaira navidam. Cheta etaira navidam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. And this material last in avarice. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat bhakti yoga taha. Bhagavat tattva vijyanam. Bhagavat tattva vijyanam. The sangha sijayate. Mukta sangha sijayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When well, these impurities are wiped away. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. He remains steady in his position of pure goodness. He becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becoming enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understand the science of God perfectly. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis. Vidyate Hridaya Grantis. Sidyante Sarva Samsaya. Sidyante Sarva Samsaya. Sidyante Chasya Karmani. Sidyante Chasya Karmani. Drushta Evat Manishwari. Drushta Evat Manishwari. Thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus the Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a Samsayam Understanding of the supreme absolute truth, personality of God. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of God. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Or from his devotee. And from his devotee. In Krishna consciousness, can one understand the science of Krishna? Understand the science of Krishna. Shrimad Bhagavatam, Canto One, Chapter Seventeen, Text Number Seven. Tamva Nirmirnala Devala Tamva Mrinala Dhavala Pada Nyuna Padacharan Pade Nyuna Padacharan Vishuru Pena Kim Kaschit Vishuru Pena Kim Kaschit Devo Na Parike Dayan Devo Na Parike Dayam Translation. Then he, Maharaj Brikshit, asked the bull, Oh, who are you? Are you a bull as white as a white lotus, or are you a demigod? You have lost three of your legs and are moving on only one. Are you some demigod causing us grief in the form of a bull? Purport by Srila Prabhupada. At least up to the time of Maharaj Pariksit, no one could imagine the wretched conditions of the cow and the bull. Maharaj Pariksit, therefore, was astonished to see such a horrible scene. He inquired whether the bull was not a demigod, assuming such a wretched condition to indicate, indicate the future of the cow and bull. Srila Prabhupada Ki So we'll go to the next verse. Najatu 
kuravendranam jatu kuravendranam durdanda pariram bhute bite durdanda pariram bite bhutale nupatan yasmin bhutale nupatan chisim vinate palininam sucha Translation. Now for the first time in a kingdom well protected by the arms of the kings of the Kuru dynasty, I see you are grieving with tears in your eyes. Up till now, no one on earth has ever shed tears because of royal neglect, negligence. Royal negligence. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> the protection of the lives of both the human beings and the animals is the first and foremost duty of the government. A government must not discriminate in such principles. It is simply horrible for a pure-hearted soul to see organized animal killing by the state in this age of Kali. Maharaja Pariksit was lamenting for the tears in the eyes of the bull, and he was astonished to see such an unprecedented thing in his good kingdom. Men and animals were equally protected as far as life was concerned, that is the way in God's kingdom. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Well, this is real culture. Every life is important because life means there is a gradual movement from lower species to higher species till one comes to the human form of life and in a human form of life, one has a chance to understand what is the real purpose of life and how to achieve it. In the lower forms of life, there's no possibility of understanding these things. Therefore, uh, if we unnecessarily kill animals and lower forms of life, we interrupt their natural progress through different species up to the human form. And also, we don't have the right to unnecessarily kill any creature. Sometimes it's necessary in certain circumstances, but in general, it's not necessary at all. And especially in, in the presence of such opulence of grains and fruits and vegetables, uh, there's no need to eat meat and, and unnecessarily slaughter animals. But this is not understood by uh, the present culture and, and, and society and the politicians. And that's a great mistake. However, there are people who have been practicing vegetarianism, at least for a long time. In Christianity, there are sects of Christians who are strict vegetarians. Did you know that? Yeah. Very strict uh, vegetarians. And in Islam also, there's some, uh, there's some history of vegetarianism also amongst the Shias. And in other cultures also, or in religions, like for example, if you want to go higher up in the hierarchy of the priests in the uh, Assyrian uh, uh, church, Yet to be a vegetarian. You can't be a, a higher official. You can be a normal priest, but you can't go higher than that unless you become a vegetarian. And so, uh, even from ancient times, uh, this vegetarian diet was recommended. Am amongst the Pandavas, uh, only Bhima ate some meat, but the other Pandavas never ate meat. Although they're Kshatriyas, they have the right to eat meat. Uh, so, uh, this, uh, but no one ever imagined previously eating a cow. That was, you know, cows are given utmost respect. All animals are given respect, but cows especially. So, we can see how degraded people have come in this age. Even people who are supposed to be Hindus, uh, at least 50% of the Hindus regularly eat meat. Another 20 25% uh, 
eat meat outside of the house and they go outside. And uh, the other 25% is gradually diminishing also the, of the strict vegetarians. So this uh, tendency, I like even here, uh, you'll have uh, descendants of Brahmin families that come here from India and they eat, their, their children eat meat. They feel as if, well, they're going to school, everybody else is eating meat. If they don't eat meat, they're discriminated against. So, okay, let them eat meat. So not, not all of the uh, Hindus are like that, but there are many that just give up, give up and not even try and stop it. And other things too. So uh, this gradual, uh, and also Prabhupada has clearly said, and I, I, can, I can show you the quote he said, and actually, there's not much difference between the Hindus and the Muslims because they're all eating meat <laughs> and uh, engaging in other types of uh, uh, illicit activities. So there's a great need for Krishna consciousness and uh, because previously men and animals were protected as far as life was concerned and that is the way in God's kingdom. So what is God's kingdom? It is Krishna consciousness, where it's practiced by everyone and protected by the uh, Kshatriyas. So there are a lot of things people don't understand. Like, for example, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that uh, the scientists' mistake is that they, they ignore two types of energy material energy and spiritual energy. In other words, they only they ignore the spiritual energy and they're only concerned with the material energy. And they come up with false philosophies that the spiritual energy, if it exists, it comes from the material energy. Whereas the truth is the exact opposite. The spiritual energy is the source of the material energy and the material energy only is temporarily manifest and then it disappears but the spiritual energy is always manifest. It, it never disappears. It's never destroyed or never disappears. So the scientists claim everything comes from matter and the and the Bhagavad Gita explains that everything comes from spirit. So the whole educational system is based on this idea that everything comes from matter and spirit is something we can't experiment on. Therefore, it's not relevant. It's not science. It's not part of science. So, we we have this blockage today uh, in in the educational system, and all this eventually breeds atheism and uh, preoccupation with sense gratification. So the scientists they begin from matter instead of spirit, and and thus uh, the they get everything wrong. And therefore, even more serious than that is in the Catholic Church and many Christian churches, they don't accept that animals have a soul. So that means you can do whatever you want with the animal. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just material. It doesn't have a soul like a human being. Or if it has its soul, it's not on the same level as that of a human being. So everywhere you turn in this Kali Yuga, there's, there's a blockage of uh, holding people back from pure spiritual life. And because of that, there's so much suffering. And so the scientists also claim that consciousness comes from matter. And it's the complete opposite. So uh, how can we convince people of the truth? Well, we have to read Prabhupada's books carefully. Uh, so First of all, Prabhupada says that uh, that uh, uh, um, darkness comes from light. And I, we, I spoke about this a little bit yesterday. Darkness comes from light. In other words, in the absence of light, there's darkness. But light does not come from darkness. Uh, so this is this seems to make sense. But some people would argue, no, I don't believe that. However, even in ancient times, like Socrates, 
uh, instructed Plato uh, the allegory of the cave. And in the allegory of cave of the cave, Socrates said that in this world, uh, to give an example of the position of living entities, they are prisoners in a cave with their back to a wall and the wall goes up to a certain height and then there are uh, people uh, uh, on, uh, on the height, on the, on the top of that wall uh, and they're holding images or, or cutouts of things that exist like people and animals and in this cave there's, there's, there's an opening where some light is coming in but not much at all. So in order to create more light, there's, there's a fires burning uh, uh, in front of the uh, people holding, uh, behind people are holding images. And that light is projected on the wall and the prisoners are, uh, are tied to chairs and they're facing an, uh, uh, their back to the wall and, and they're looking at another wall in front of them. And all they're seeing is shadow images of thing of of those cutouts, and that's the only reality they know. And uh, sometimes one of those prisoners escapes and runs out of the cave into the open and sees the sunlight, and it hurts his eyes, and he runs back in and he wants to get in the chair and get be tied again, and just see the images on the wall. This was explained 2,500 years ago. Obviously, they got this from the Vedas, right? Uh, if you read the 15th chapter, it's talking about the banyan tree, upside down banyan tree and all that. And uh, it's explained that uh, uh, what we see in the material world is a shadow image uh, uh, of uh, reality in the spiritual world. So this idea that people are not seeing real things, they're just seeing uh, dark projections of things that, and they don't really understand the real nature of reality. So, Prabhupada explains that in the sun there are no clouds. It's all light. And uh, when the sunlight is, is, uh, uh, emanates throughout the universe, uh, whenever there's some dimness because of uh, something blocking the sunlight, uh, and eventually there's darkness, and uh, so that darkness is a is one thing that's created by the sun when the sunlight is obstructed. Just like if you turn your back to the sun, you'll see your shadow. That's called dimness, right? And if the if you have a big enough object. Uh, like, uh, or if, and the other problem is that the Earth is revolving on its axis, so when it revolves, uh, like right now, you can't see the sun, right? The, the, the other side of the Earth is blocking the sunlight. So uh, this, the darkness is always a function of light. Now, besides uh, producing temporary darkness coming from the sun, the sun also produces clouds by evaporation of water. And it also uh, produces mists. Uh, so it's, it's creating three different things, mists, clouds, and darkness, that are temporary. That's exactly what's happening uh, in, in this material world. The, uh, the obscuring of the spiritual light produces these temporary things and we become illusioned by it uh, and uh, we become obstructed it's like we're living in a in a cloudy atmosphere in our in our consciousness all the time and we're not actually seeing things correctly so this cloudy consciousness is produced from spiritual energy and therefore everything is coming from krishna Am sarvasya prabhava matak sarvam pavartate iti matva bhajante maham buddha bhava saman vitaha. So when we see like, like people eating animals, uh, they're completely in illusion. They have no idea of what is the truth. 
and they're going darker into darker and darker uh, you know, realms where they're just suffering. So how do we convince them uh, to uh, become Krishna conscious? Well, happiness is infectious. Just like Prabhupada tells, talks about the uh, Charlie Chaplin movie. Charlie Chaplin goes to this uh, dance hall and everybody, ha all the men have tuxedos and women have very formal dress. And it's very boring and nobody wants to dance with him. And he gets a little disgusted so he, he goes into the bathroom and uh, he sits down on something but there's a, a, a loose nail and, and when he gets up it tears the back of his uh, pants off and it's got like a hole in, his, in the back of his pants. So he says, ah, so what? He said, it's so boring out there. Maybe this will create some uh, excitement. So he goes out and uh, he asks one lady to dance and uh, everyone's seeing he's got a hole in the back of his pants, right? They see his underwear. It's like these people that walk down the street now. They're, they're clo they're, they're, their pants like you know, three quarters of the way down on, on their butt, you know, and you can see their underwear and everything, and, and they're just sort of walking like this, you know, hobbling along. And, and you think, well, that guy must be crazy, right? But no, it's, it's, it's a style now. <laughs> so so uh, Charlie Chaplin starts dancing with this lady, you know, and he starts jumping up and down and going around and, you know, and everyone's looking, you know, and they said, wow, you know, maybe that hole in his pants is making him so energetic and happy, you know. <laughs> so the other men start ripping their, <laughs> their pants, you know, and then they start grabbing some lady and dancing like this, and everyone's having a great time now, right? Whereas before, it was very formal and boring, right? <laughs> so this is uh, the nonsense that's going on uh, in, the, in the material world. Uh, everything is based on silliness and, and, and ignorance. So uh, we need to convince people, however, through happiness, just like Charlie Chaplin made everybody happy by walking around with his pants down, basically. But uh, we should make people happy by chanting, dancing, and feasting. Everybody likes to chant, everybody likes to dance, and everybody likes to feast. And when they see that this is the daily life of the devotees, and by the way, when's the secret going to get out? See? Uh, <laughs> this is the daily life of the devotees, and they see the devotees are happy and they're cooperating with each other. That's another thing that's very attractive, when people see a large group of people cooperating without arguing and fighting and being jealous and, and envious, and they're working together, and when people cooperate, great things are done. And <laughs> Even in a family, when the husband and wife are always cooperating, not argue, arguing, they both have the same goal in life, uh, hopefully it's to go back to Godhead, uh, then they can do wonderful things. See? Cooperation uh, is the basis of happiness. So if you have a large group of people cooperating, it's even greater than simply husband and wife cooperating. And, and you can do wonderful things, like we do these different festivals, and uh, we were, uh, festivals in the temple, festivals outside, and the temple, you know, when there wasn't the Chinese uh, virus, so many people were coming every day, and, and Rasavati was working overtime with other cooks cooking, and uh, it's like never-ending bliss. So the only way we can convince people is by this bliss, this happiness, this cooperation, this harmony, this uh, collective consensus understanding of what is the purpose of life. And when there's no arguing and everyone is on the same page and everyone is working cooperatively and great things are happening, are being accomplished by that cooperation, other people see it and they become attracted. And especially when they come to the temple and they see happy women, happy children, they say, oh, oh, something really good's going on here. You know? And people, they're very friendly and welcoming 
the strangers and, and being kind to them, giving them prasadam and so forth. So that's the only way to penetrate the darkness and the uh, confusion in the material world. Otherwise, everything is deteriorating in Kali Yuga. Uh, relationships are deteriorating, health is deteriorating, uh, people are not happy, they're and they're taking drugs and this thing and that thing. And when you try to explain to them why they're not happy, they get angry. So to avoid all that, the fact that devotees are continually happy, peaceful, affectionate, giving, and basically transcendentally situated, that's the way to convince people. And when there's a large group like that, People, you know, uh, just like one time a man heard a, some uh, inspi inspiring speaker and the speaker said, money attracts money. He said, huh. So he went to the bank and he saw the teller was counting. Uh, they had closed, she had closed her uh, uh, you know, desk there and, and she was counting the money at the end of the day. So he had a $10 bill, so he threw it over the uh, counter into her pile of money. And she saw that, and she just took the $10 bill and put it into her, uh, you know, till, you know, and she was counting. And then the guy was just staring at her. And she, finally, she looked at him and says, is there something wrong, sir? And he said, no. He said, why are you staring at me? He said, well, I, I, I'm waiting. She said, what are you waiting for? He said, well, I, 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 had to, I heard this inspirational speaker, and he said, money attracts money. So uh, I was waiting for you to throw back some money at me. <laughs> and she said, yeah, that's right. She said, my money attracted your money. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, uh, uh, we need to uh, learn something from that, that when there's a large amount of money, it attracts a small amount of money, right? And when there's a large group of people that are cooperating, it attracts other people, and who are, you know, people who are happy. So that should be it. Massive sankirtan, massive food distribution, massive festivals, massive happiness, right? Massive book distribution. This will convince people to become Krishna conscious. Otherwise, you can go up there and speak all the philosophy you want. Very few people will be convinced. Very, very few people. Although it sounds great, but not, people are not philosophical. Their brains are such, so deteriorated. It's just like if you have a flint and a, a lighter with a flint in it. Flint is that rough uh, metallic surface that the uh, rolling part of the lighter goes on and creates a spark, right? But when you've been using the lighter a lot, eventually the flint doesn't make a spark anymore. So that's the brains of people today. They've been so dull, dulled by uh, sense gratification that uh, you can't get a spark in their brain anymore. They're, you know, you tell them something that's fantastic, wonderful, it's transcendental, it doesn't register. It's, it's like, huh? You know. So the only thing they can see is happiness. And happiness without drugs, happiness without uh, nonsense and sense gratification, uh, you know, you can't ask for anything better because uh, one remains, one is not a victim that way. Okay, so I'll stop right there. Are there any questions? I actually, just, it's funny, maybe you saw the video or something, because last week on Sankitan, the one guy, I think he was on drugs or something, young guy, but he had his, 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 his pants really down, you know, we could see everything. <laughs> and he's dancing, you know, when we're doing kirtan. <laughs> it's kind of funny dancing. He says, literally, you know, he had uh, the trousers were all, all the way down. It and was then, funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you no, know, when you mentioned that. I didn't, was, I didn't see the video. <laughs> I didn't see the video. <laughs> because when you said that, it just happened last week. Uh, I was with you or? No, that was, no, no Wednesday. We I think what's wrong with the guy, you know? We just let him do what he wanted to do. Because it, yeah. it was no violence, it just, it was. 
<laughs> well, he got happy because you were playing music and yeah, I mean, chanting. He, in his way, he was happy. Yeah. You know? But he's completely, he's he bent down. Well, no, see. Sometimes it's, it's we just, like, it's we like, took our eyes, you it's know. Like <laughs> there's a man with one ear and there's a man with no ears. Mm -hmm. So the man with one ear, let's say, let's say this ear is cut off. So he's always saying, hello, how you doing? <laughs> okay. And he doesn't want to show it. <laughs> <laughs> But a, a man that has don't no ears, he does, you know, he doesn't, doesn't care anymore. You know, mm -hmm. says, how are you doing? You know, you don't you see he has no ears at all. So when he puts his pants down like that, you know, he's wearing it purposely like that. Then yeah. he doesn't care anymore. No, you know, he's just showing everything. You know, it's, it was very funny. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, what you did was you gave him a chance to hear the holy name. Oh yeah, we couldn't do anything. He's yeah. just moving about and. Right. You know, doing different, you know, bodily, you know, movement and dancing, funny. Yeah. But then he keeps just bringing that. Well, there's two types down. of people like that. One is the devotee who's in transcendental bliss. The other is someone that's crazy. You know. So that I, one was crazy. Yeah. yeah, that one was crazy, right? <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I went to somebody's house. You have to be crazy to be like that. I went to somebody's house. This is years ago, and his sister was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> she was completely crazy. So what, 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 what did she do? She'd be there, she'd be sitting down quietly, and all of a sudden she'd jump up and start singing and moving around and dancing, you know? And then she'd stop again and sit down, you know? So, you know, I, I, was, I was speaking to him, and all of a sudden she's up there dancing and singing, right? And, and talking nonsense, right? So the, the only two types of people will do that, the, the, the devotee who's in transcendental ecstasy, and okay. someone who's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Haribo. Okay, all glories to Prabhupada. Keep. Keep.